Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us and for participating with us in the reading of the word of the Lord today. Today we're going to be busy in the book of John and we're going to be going through chapters 2, 3 and 4. And these are quite profound chapters and so I don't want to waste too much time in going into it. But let's just look at John chapter 2. And we see that in this chapter, we read through the first miracle that the Lord Jesus performed according to the Apostle John. Now, one of the strangest parts of the book of John for me is that John states at the end of the book that there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Yet, John records the least amount of miracles of our Lord. Only seven mentioned before the crucifixion and resurrection. Now there is a reason for this, a deep and profound reason, and I would urge you to look at this in detail if you can. Also, each miracle bears with it a deep significance and spiritual type. Now I really don't want to turn this into a study, but just to give you an indication with this first miracle of what is really happening here, when Mary comes to the Lord Jesus and tells him that there is no wine left, he says to her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. But was he being disrespectful or was he showing something that was so much deeper? Was he showing us a deeper picture? The wine speaks of the revelation given by the Holy Ghost. Uh, This we can see in Acts chapter 2 and we'll get to that and we'll explain it once we get to it. Now when Mary tells Jesus that there is no more wine, he addresses her as woman which represents the church as we've seen throughout the scripture thus far and we've explained it a couple of times in the readings as well. So what he's actually saying is, Church, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour, the hour that I will give the Holy Ghost to the church, is not yet come. He then asked them to fill six water pots with water, now six being the number of men, showing that he is going to work with and through men, and the water being a type of the Word of God, which we have discussed in previous readings, and we are going to get to when we get to Ephesians chapter 5. So men or mankind, should I say, that is filled with the Word, will receive the revelation of the Word by the Holy Ghost when the time of the Lord is come. This is exactly what happened at the day of Pentecost. Now, amazingly, All the miracles in the book of John, because his book looks at everything with an eagle eye, deeper than the surface and right to the deity of Christ, all carry with it deep types and significance. The chapter goes on to tell us how the Lord purges out the temple by whipping the merchants out of there. And then he again goes so deep by using the temple as an allegory to speak of his death and resurrection in three days. We then get to John chapter 3. And this is one of my favorite chapters in the entire scripture. And although it contains one of the most well-known verses in the entire Bible, the passage is not very well studied at all. We see that Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews and a Pharisee, comes to the Lord by night and speaks to him. And the Lord teaches him from the Old Testament the things that we think are only New Testament principles. Yes, these could not be fulfilled without Christ, But they are mentioned and should have been searched out by the students of the Old Testament. Principles like being born again. And the Lord Jesus rebukes Nicodemus for not knowing these things, not finding these things in the Old Testament, being a leader in Israel. The Lord then takes him to Moses, lifting up the serpent on a pole. Now, this was so profound as the Lord says that the sign speaks of himself that would be lifted up on a cross. The brass serpent representing the judgment of sin. Jesus Christ, our Lord, will be the judgment on our sin, the payment for our sin. And it could only be him, the sinless one, the son of God, that could pay this price. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The chapter concludes with the baptism and the witness of John the Baptist concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. Then we get to chapter 4, and again an amazing passage in which the Lord reveals himself to the lady at the well in Samaria. He tells her the deeds of her past and the thoughts in her heart, but engages her within the word. It is interesting to note, and 
something that we need to really apply in our lives as well. We are so seeker sensitive in our approach and we like to use worldliness or worldly examples to explain the gospel. Yet the Lord Jesus never does this. He uses the word to engage the people. So he asks her for a drink and then speaks about the Old Testament imagery to say that he is the one that gives living water to those that seek him. There is so much more in this chapter, but I cannot go through it all. But please read this with a heart of wanting to dig more into the word of God as there is so much to glean from this. The Lord Jesus in this passage shows us what our attitude should be. He says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And we see his zeal to do the will of the Father. It says, Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Let this be our desire and our meat as well, that we would seek to do the will of the one who has placed us here. This is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Chapter 2 And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bare it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, for the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. After this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples, and they continued there not many days. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money and overthrew the tables, and said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house an house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building. And wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spoke of the temple of his body. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Chapter 3 There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, 
Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea, and there he tarried with them and baptized. And John also was baptizing in Enon near to Salem, because there was much water there. And they came and were baptized, for John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold, the same baptizes, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing, except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness, that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. What he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him, The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Chapter 4 when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. 
and he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? Which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah's cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. And upon this came his disciples, and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, What seekest thou, or why talkest thou with her? The woman then left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. In the meanwhile, his disciples prayed him, saying, Master, eat. But he said unto them, I have meat to eat that ye know not of. Therefore said the disciples one to another, Hath any man brought him aught to eat? Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me, and to finish his work. Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. And herein is that saying true, one soweth and another reapeth. I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor. Other men labored, and ye are entered into their labors. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were come unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word, and said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Now after two days he departed thence and went into Galilee. For Jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. 
Then when he was come into Galilee, the Galileans received him, having seen all the things that he did at Jerusalem at the feast, for they also went unto the feast. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. Then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in the which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth. And himself believed and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea into Galilee.